So as we can see that um, just from the two videos from yesterday and now today when I'm talking about the output of the line of the ski that already the group has stopped heel steering so much and what we're not seeing now is that braking action throughout the top end of the turn where it's almost like everything's happening in a short impulse and there's a huge amount of spray coming off the skis it's causing them to rotate it's causing a stress on the the center of mass that they're not able to contain so therefore smoothing out that line has made a big difference it's something as slim pill as that what we're about to do now is change the shape of the turn because this is a fairly strong group and we're going to move into a short turn and i've already had a quick look at the short turn now but what was interesting was that they can't pole plant the timing of the pole plant and everything's not quite right so we already discussed this last night as the team and we decided that we would specifically look at pole planting in the next two days because it's something that most people have self-taught and really don't have an idea of exactly how to use the benefit of a good pole plant and a lot of the times a pole plant can actually be more of a distraction in somebody skiing than anything however when doing a short turn and as we progress into the the moguls it's going to be really important that they have an understanding of the accuracy of the pole plant so i've got two things to tackle here i do want to shorten up the turn um, but secondly, I also want to be in a position where I can have them pole planting, otherwise a short term becomes you know, quite difficult for people who cannot pole plant. Now, to get them the shape of the turn, what we're going to be working on is a drill where we have an offset slalom course. So if you imagine a set of red and blue poles, if you like, going down the mountain, Instead of them being in a line, what I want to do is I want the group to imagine those poles have been separated out by maybe two or even three meters at first. And they have a target of skiing around a red pole and then forcing the turn out and away from them to catch the blue pole and repeating that throughout. This will give them an output to think about again where I don't need to start thinking of body management too much and the inputs of what they're doing within the biomechanics. Instead, I can just give them the visualization, give them a good demonstration and hopefully, fingers crossed, that actually gets them into the position that I want them in. Let's go up, have a look and see what we get. So as I said, I'm, I've already talked to them and said, look, red pole blue pole and here it's a wider than normal short term maybe and it's just getting them i want to see that they can again get a shape again yeah. look at dylan's rotation look at his tipping in but he's doing the task the task was to find the red pole then force the tips and force the tips away from you to find the blue pole same again with with joe is fairly good with his little toy skis <laughs> wearing children's skis but he does a, a good job, but there, you see, because it's too too much turny and too inside, but here. Red pole, blue pole, red pole, blue pole. Yes. Pole planting, interesting. Yeah, the pole planting is something that uh, that actually, yeah, for example here, it's it's a natural movement, not, not the, the set of the pole, the planting itself, uh, more the preparation. If you have a bent leg, the outside arm goes forward. It's like walking. That's if you see skiers not not uh, not learn skiers uh, or not skilled skiers by the school, just a normal tourist on the slope. You always see that they put forward the outside hand. It's because of the rotation they want to turn, and always in the turn outside they start to do this and for me for example the pole planting is not that kill this movement this movement because it's a good time actually we have to build in another movement in a in a, in a better movement what we actually need that they don't need to put the hand forward they need to drop the shoulder a little bit and build up some tension and not the hand for just the tip of the pole so this is this is something you have a movement they have a solution for preparing a pole and just adjust a little bit what we need actually we don't need your shoulder forward we need the tip of the pole forward and and then how to adjust this how to how to make a change in this movement that we can use this feeling what they have okay i have to put it forward so this is the pole plant and do you agree 
that, because from my opinion, when I'm dealing with Ski Instructor Academy students, it's extremely rare. If I say to somebody, have you ever been taught how to pole plant? They say, yeah, 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 I've had umpteen lessons in pole planting. It's most people go, no. It's a self-taught thing. Uh, yeah. They, so, so if if it's self it's, it's okay if, if the timing is right. But the timing is one thing, the other thing, how to prepare, what to do with the pole. You see people just hanging, the pole is just hanging in the hand, no tension, no torque, nothing. Just swinging the pole in front of the ski. And, and the timing is good, but the pole plant itself is floppy. It's floppy. It's yeah. too floppy to get the impulse and get the, get, the, get the help from the pole, what we actually need. Balance, timing, tension orientation so all rhythm it's immediately not there because it's mm -hmm. just floppy so this is something we we try to to yeah as we see with with jessica yeah. here um you know there's either no pole plant or it's it's floppy it's there's just nothing there and as i said it's challenging for people then to do a short turn when they don't have that pole plant you know it makes it awkward same here very unsure about the whole thing and now she's thinking of the pole plan she's completely confused but well, you see that she prepares the tip but yeah. it's also no tension so no yeah. tension there the upper body is loose and just putting somehow the tip but the timing from the preparation is there the preparation of the tip of the pole it has to go forward until while the turn yeah. And I think what, what Gary said is really important is it's not a matter of this moving your pole plant. It's actually probably, for me, I like to explain it almost like it's the flexion from the ankle knee hip that is going to bring that arm in that direction. You don't actively move yeah. your arm down, yeah. which is yeah. what you see happening, or swing it. Yep. which is even more of a favorite one and yep. um, so let's let's have a look because poor planting i think a lot of people like switch off from the video that we've made of the short turns um it's exactly what i expected from each one of the students because i know now know sort of what their strengths and weaknesses are obviously the the rotation that we see it, it's obviously one of the most common things that you see in a short turn you know people rotating in each of the the directions of the turn but a lot of the course is coming as well from what I've observed, the fact that they can't pole plant yet. Nobody's really accurately and, um, you know, emphasized the importance that the pole plant is. And of course, what the pole plant is for. So when I get up there, you'll see me talking to them as well about what they believe the use of the pole plant is and why it becomes so important. But on top of that as well, I need to address some of the mechanic issues. Um, and we've already done that a little bit off the hill because I did have the privilege of having this group in the lecture room where we were able to look a little bit of uh, ankle movement, hip mobility, for example. And of course, ankle movement, hip mobility are always going to play a huge role in, in something like a short turn. So I was explaining before there, to, to Dylan where one of the students has limited dorsiflexion, limited range of ankle movement, that can be a big positive for him in his long turns because he can stiffen well and he can hold an edge in his carving turns and I've seen him do that quite well. But of course it then becomes a little bit of a weakness in the short turns and definitely when we hit the moguls it's going to be an issue because he's going to find it difficult to be able to work in the fore and aft plane fast enough from the feet. So. Let's see how we get on with the group. We'll take it to the next step. Guys, with pole planting, it may seem at first a little bit unnecessary all the time. And discussions on the chairlift, you know, some people thought it wasn't, you know, always there. But actually, the pole movement that we make and the pole touch or the plant that we make is there all the time in short, long turns and racing as well. And from my side, the way I see it is why the pole plant is there. Anybody give me a first reason? What do you think it provides? It, 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 it's a turning aid. It definitely also in your brain almost initiates a point, oh, I'm planting the pole, I now need to be making a new turn. What about stability? Do you think it helps with stability? Yeah, yeah it's a third point of contact in effect. It's got one, two, 
third point of contact. And sometimes in what we call a blocking pole plant, it can really help us, especially if we get ourselves out of balance and we need to, you know, save ourselves using some form of pole plant can really help that. And sometimes we even use a double pole plant to help us get back in line and in balance. So stability is another reason. Rhythm and flow is another reason, okay? So the pole plant is really, really important, but it shouldn't be disruptive in your guests. So when you're teaching, there's a few of you making a pole plant that I would call is disrupting you. It's not helping you ski, it's actually throwing you out. So the timing needs to be done as well. If we look at a sequence of turns going down, where do you think I would plant the pole? Okay, would I plant it here? Would I plant it here? I would I plant it here? So A, B or C? Who's for A? Who's for B? Who's for C? A is the correct answer. It's a lot earlier than we think. It's often at the point of change of edge, okay? And it's also a constant flux, a constant flow. Now, pole planting, some people say it just comes from the wrist. So you'll see people do drills like this, where they're just showing people it's coming from the wrist, which could be the case in some circumstances, but I like to think of it more as coming almost from my lats and hip. Sounds weird, but way down here in my hip, in my lats, in my back, it's more here. It's an arm movement, okay? For me, that's how it is. I like to feel the swing of the pole happening throughout the turn and not like this. And that's why I say sometimes it's a pole touch rather than a plant, <laughs> plant, okay? So to get the feel of the pole plant, as I said before, it happens at the change of edge. If you look at a sequence of turns going down, I could draw a straight line through those turns and the pole plant would always happen on that line. It doesn't change. Okay, so if our turns are symmetrical going down here, we should find our pole plant will always happen on a certain line. And usually I would use a groomer track and all this seem to have gone now. And I would say, always plant on that line. So I'm gonna ask um, at the end of this, Gary's opinion, because I know that, that pole planting, guys, is something which I feel like a lot of people switch off to. It's hard to do a lesson on pole planting because the students get bored and you've really got to sell them the benefits of it sometimes because they've just never done it and they'll go, why, why do I need a pole plant? But of course, you guys probably know once you start pole planting and it gets good, you can't live without the pole plant. It's like the most necessary tool for you. But you have to sometimes persuade your student the importance of it and make the brain and the body feel, oh, actually, that this is actually quite good. I do go on to say in the end, you know, it's going to help them get into a, a better forward position once they finish the turn. And I explain a few more things. But for Jessica here, you can see this is this is a crude attempt at her starting to try to do the pole plant. Um, have you got Jessica now? Or no? Yeah, yeah. You have Jessica? Yeah. Was she able to pole plant any better? Because <laughs> she was always loose when she left me. Yeah, we started the pole plant just in the end of the a few days because uh, I, I built another way. I, I, I started to, to build up a, a, a core tension and actually a, a body position, also with help of the pole. And just, the, the, just in the end of the three days, we, we grabbed the pole because I wanted that they have like a frame so the mm -hmm. shoulder and like what, that, you, yeah. what you what you what you told this elbow to elbow is is a fixed system and get this to be able to hold this tension while they're preparing the pole without losing the whole system and losing the tension in the shoulder so we started first to build up that and when i'm a I said, okay, now we have some kind of frame, we can balance with it, then we start to prepare with tension the pole plant. And that is for me, I like what you, you, met, uh, what you call it, uh, mentioned, that it's not, not from the wrist and not with the loose hand. So for me, the pole plant, especially if, if I want to have 
tension, I want to have torque, I have, want to have stable upper body, I'm always uh, try to, to say, hey, squeeze the poles, mm. don't lose with the little fingers, squeeze the poles because mm. if it's squeezed and you have to bring the tip forward, you need to drop the shoulder and you need to bend and flex the elbow to get the tip over there and actually this movement what you told as well we can build in this this process to building up the position i hate this word position because it's not a shape mm. it's a behavior it's, it's built up in the turn but actually it's somewhere in the in the fall line already there the tension how to prepare the tip of the pole without swinging lifting up so losing all that what we actually need this is an important point because you mentioned that, that the plant itself the point where we put the pole in the snow is just to change the edge so from come from the uphill edge flat and the other one is a tenth of a second so we have to have that point and if the tip of the pole is behind me one and a half meter Mm. and I'm always late so to prepare the tip of the pole has to come forward at least one meter from behind me and get there and if I'm ready so I have a position and the tip is there I can decide okay now I can change if it's bumpy if it bumps if it ice if I want to I'm ready for the next turn and the, the pole is also there so so for me this preparation process and the movement and how to fit in the whole movement how we, we build up this basic position or or Fahrverhalten <laughs> in German this is a big behavior what we need to to steer the turn uh, the preparation of the pole so pole plant movement has to fit in this it's, it's a harmonical thing and that's why you ski, see skiers that's a round movement it's so easy and it's no stress about the yeah. pole it's not flicking around because it's always on time everything on time in that movement so that that's definitely one i think we finish off here so guys i've explained a little bit about pole planting and i've also explained the sort of analogy of thinking of a section of pie and that i want to be able to plant the pole normally in my long term i sort of aim a little bit forward into this section here because the pole planting effect is helping me to go from my rear position at the end of the turn to bring me back into the middle and forward at the start of the turn. Okay, now one of the things I want you to be aware of is the uphill hand. I've said that before that people have a tendency to allow one to drop back as one comes forward. I like to bring both arms actively feel that I'm leveling out and not allowing one to sink back. Also, it's really important that when you're pole planting, it doesn't make you go inside because at the end of the day you're now toppling into the new turn and what you're trying to do with your pole plant is you want to have a sensation especially in a short turn that actually it's the opposite it's holding you back from toppling over into the new turn here okay and not here so on the video check to see if this is happening and you're reaching out or are you actually initiating it and actually ending up falling into the new turn here okay so watch out for the bad things that happen it pushes you inside and if your poles are too long you might get a feeling that you're doing this with your poles a little bit bring them to the outside we don't want the tips to do this you see this in snowplow turners <laughs> okay quite a lot we want to feel that the poles in the right place i said about blocking pole plants that we'll talk about later any questions about pole planting it's a, a mileage game from this second on with pole plant we get more and more accurate and hopefully in a day or two it starts to feel like it's a rhythm now right it, it, it's really interesting that you know i've asked the group in many groups over time and it's very very rare someone will turn around to me and say i have had lessons in pole planting somebody has shown me when how to do it you know its purpose etc and i think a lot of you watching this video for example will probably pause or switch it off and move on and go ah oh, pole planting it's just one of those things you have to address and you do have to stay tuned and actually you know accept the fact that the pole plant can be extremely disruptive 
if it's done incorrectly, but extremely productive when used correctly and especially off piste in the bumps, race carving, short turns, etc. And once people use a, 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 a pole plant accurately, it becomes really difficult not to use a pole plant. And the guy I was talking to before who was saying, well, I don't think you have to use a pole plant all the time. You know, when I race, I don't use it all the time. It's like you are using the mechanism of pole planting, even when you're going through the slalom course, etc. It's still there. In my mind, it's this trigger coming from the hip, across through the back, into your shoulder, into your elbow, into your wrist, into your hand. It's not just going to come from your wrist all the time. And, um, you know, I know a lot of ski instructors like that sort of accuracy drill of just making it come from the wrist. But believe me, if you start using your wrist like this a lot and hard on the ground, it's not going to be very comfortable for your wrist and elbow. So there's more to it than that. And I think it's a signature as well because we all have funky things with pole plants, elbows, arms and stuff. And that's one of the ways I can always tell which of my trainers are coming down the mountain because they have a certain shape, especially with the pole plant as well. But interestingly, when we discussed the timing of the pole plant, look how many of them had it very, very late, you know, past the initiation stage of the turn by far, because that's where they were pole planting. Um, and if I'd let them get away with that, that would have been a problem for the future of their skiing. Now, from our side in Ski Instructor Academy, we don't ignore these disciplines. We purposely tackle the things that other people don't want to tackle because they are important. And for ski instructor exams particularly, you know, the ski instructor has to have a smooth, accurate pole plant. He has to look the part as well. So yes, I can go through all now the system of drills and I won't bore you with that because yes, we need to traverse the piece. We need to, especially with Jessica there, where she's never really pole planted at all. She really needs to go right back to the beginnings and that would be traversing across, making little um, garland style turns, for example, a garland turn, like a, what I like to call a chicken turn or a step turn, where we initiate the turn, but don't finish it, initiate a turn, but don't finish it all sorts of drills to accurately feed back the message of pole planting. And that brings me on to the equipment side as well, because when we're in Austria, for example, we vigorously control, because we're very lucky to work with the biggest sports shop you can imagine with skiing, and we vigorously control the length of poles, for example. And a lot of these guys are in poles that are way too long for this style of skiing. So we've already sent a couple down to have their poles sh uh, chopped here and cut down. Just be aware that a very long pole, you know, if you're using a cross-country pole or something or a ski touring pole that's long, it's, it's, it's also going to be throwing you out and making you jerk up and down. Even the poles I'm using, I've left these in Argentina for years and years and they're, they're actually a little bit long for me. Um, I would prefer to cut these down two or three centimetres at least. So the length of the pole can be disruptive as well. So let's make sure we get that. The quality of the pole, strangely enough, just having like the right weight feel in your hand can be so important. Um, if it's too flimsy and light, it just doesn't feel right in my hand. You know, you might like a light pole. Some people do. And a lot of the fashion poles that are the really expensive ones are almost like paper light. I don't like that. I like a little bit of weight in the hand. I feel it swings better and it, it's weird. But obviously what we don't want is like a, a puppet master style pole where the poles are really flamboyant and they're sticking up in the air. That's another idea of disruptive pole planting. Um, so I'm not going to go on too much on this tutorial about pole planting, but I do want you to be aware that the group now will be working on pole planting to improve their ability to now go off piste and do bumps and short turns. Tackle this up. So what do you think Gary from the equipment side what I mentioned the weight the size and all this sort of stuff because I've seen this uh, controversial thing about oh people are on tiny poles and all this but there's a reason for it isn't there? Yeah especially especially you mentioned in another podcast this short poles so how short or how long say you mentioned you cut three centimeter next day, other three centimeters is always short. <laughs> so uh, that means that, yeah, the pole, pole has to be shorter. So many people just skiing with the way too long uh, poles. Where does that come from? Why are people skiing on these are, you know, super this, long this, poles? There, there are some, some uh, formals that uh, body height, 
Always, yes, you know when you're in the uh, shop and they do yeah, this, and you this have oh you have to be 90 degrees 90 or something. Degree yeah. and everybody, so with the 90 degrees, like, yeah, but you're standing straight, you have no skis Hoops on your foot, yeah. you have no English and, and you are not skiing. So, and when the pole planting is already in short turns, in short turns, we want actually that the, the platform goes away from the center of the body so so that means it cross under crosses under and we mentioned that the, the at the change that change the edge there has to be the pole plant so it has to go forward and, and do you think the long pole it's makes them go up instead vertically a lot of the time and the problem is that they even don't go that far low because they feel that the outside pole is in the way so mm. if they start to prepare the pole correctly then immediately is a problem oh it's hanging on the snow <laughs> they have a, a good position maybe they have a good edge feeling but they start to get early the tip forward and it's already in the way and what's happened up shoulder or flick around or somehow rotation lose the balance lose the good position what they already have if I have a short pole and that's why we have short poles I have a nice position, I go for it, but I don't want to lift up my arm, I don't want to get around with the tip because I need that the tip of the pole is passed by my feet close to the ground. It looks cool and it helps me to balance and keep my position. If I would be I, I would have a five centimeter longer pole, I already feel it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why we used this extendable, the extendable, one, extendable yeah. poles because I can always play a little bit around and it comes out uh, that I know exactly I ski with a 1 meter 8 centimeter pole and if it goes a little bit down one side or the other side is 2 centimeter longer yeah, yeah, yeah. I immediately feel it in my turns uh, because it build up this this kind of feeling and that's what what, what the pole f for for me so I got always the questions in the line in the in the lift queue whatever oh it's a kids pole ah it's cute <laughs> because it's it's way too short compared to the others okay we ski really dynamically but but you will see I ski the same pole length with the with the exercises and it don't looks like mm. too short the, 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 the problem I have is that the the pole, obviously, I, I'm skiing with a group now, and I, I wanted to do, so Gary's talking about, um, you know, poles that we can work and extend. The, the issue I had today was I wanted to go and do an exercise that, that Gary loves, you know, with the, with the poles, the frame and everything, and then I suddenly looked, but most of them, it wouldn't have worked, because the pole was at least at least five, but probably even up to 15 centimeters, yeah. so long that for me to do this exercise would have had some of them coming down looking like this, or, you know, it, it would look weird. So it stopped me, and that's, it's a shame here in Argentina we've found it difficult because yeah. they're refusing sometimes to cut the poles because they're carbon, <laughs> which they can cut poles down, it's not a problem. But it is a bit of an awkward thing. But Gary is telling you something, look, I've finished my tutorial, but he's telling you that, actually, this has been a long tutorial, and he, because it's so important, like what you're saying is it's, so important. It's a, a pole is not just hanging there around, it's, it's a tool what you can use. If you use it properly, it helps your skiing. Massively. Massive. Massive. And do you agree as a weight? Do you yeah, find that a bit of an issue for you, if it's too floppy or flimsy? Or do you no, not? no, I have, I have poles with really, really, really light. So you like light feel, do you? No, I don't, don't say, I have to be... I have to get used to the weight what I have. So I have, of course, some heavier poles, but I like this light carbon poles. I don't like the the complete, carbon just carbon. tiny carbon poles yeah. because it's too light. Yeah. So I skied, sorry, for my daughter the poles sometimes, and it is just a, just a carbon stick, and and it was like mm, it's 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 not can't enough for me. It's, yeah, yeah, it can't feel anything. Uh, my has some some extendable parts, so it's a little bit more more weight there. I feel compared to other aluminium poles, it's much much lighter. Uh, so and uh, and but this is a tool. 
this is a tool but for balance for get rhythm and, and position frame and, and, and this you said it which is really important one as well that like Gary said was how interesting it is just squeezing a pole how it can help so yeah. much a student so at the students I, I it always comes to a point not the first second day when I said hey guys grab the poles under 15 centimeter lower it looks funny mm, yeah but try it because it brings your center down, it helps you, but so it's not possible to ski yeah. comfortable or in balance. And that's 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 the thing about the pole and, and, and the short poles. And if you look forward, so in the, let's say uh, in the in the steps, somehow we come to dynamic skiing, mogul skiing, and you will see that always is the change when the pole plant comes. The center to the surface in the closest so in the, is the lowest point on the bump or between two dynamic turns where is the retraction and the knee comes high you are in a low position the, the legs are extended outside so in the, the in the shape of the turn if I have there a too low pole it just pops me off I even cannot go that that deep or that low in between the turns yeah you see this and often in people when they're planting the pole and, and it's too long in the moguls it's like yeah this, the moguls it? is definitely one point where you see that, that they're just losing if they have short poles also high enough i don't have to have a 120 pole because then it's not possible to to ski on time so, so you're you're about um what are you about 179 180 do you think height wise centimeters what do you mean? Uh, height, your height is one, my one, one uh, 182. 182. So Gary's 182, and he was saying 108 was his pole length. Um, I am 176, 177, and I'm not as dynamic as Gary. So I'm at a, I like about 115. This this one, this lecky that I'm using, I think is at 118, but I feel it needs to go to 115. Yeah. Would be what I feel comfortable with. Or I see in my skiing because you'll see Gary skiing and myself skiing and you'll see how my pole is affecting my turn and um, because it is a little bit longer and Gary will show you that how I'm out I'm getting pushed out because of a pole it's ridiculous isn't it it's a piece of kit that's actually throwing my skiing out yeah but this is a this is an outside impulse it stops one side and what we talked about at the gym if this leverage is higher mm. it's much easier to get out from balance if yeah. it's lower you have more stability, more stability to hold it. So, so that's that's the point. Yeah, that's exactly. The, point. the other point is that, but it's it's about the pole plant that how far you try to go inward in the turns, in the new turns. So that the pole, if it's long, then then you have to reach much far away. From you to just get in the turn with the shorter pole is just 10 centimeter away from the ski. You so are in the turn, turn, so it's much easier to get in the new turn with the with the center. Mm. And, and I showed that on the video where you saw me saying sometimes uh, with pole planting, long poles especially, people are pushed back uphill almost. Yeah. They, they can't topple across. Guys, um, I know it was a long one, but it's actually an important one. And as I said at the start, I think a lot of people just ski instructors do it. Like, let's face it, if you get a two hour private lesson, that's all you've got with a client, you're hardly gonna start doing pole planting because you're not gonna get a rebooking, are you? You're yeah. gonna think, oh, I'm gonna lose this guy. He's not gonna get it. But we're very lucky at Ski Instructor Academy because we have people for a long time so we can yeah. do it properly. Yeah. That's the thing that we've been harping on about. Let's do it properly, guys. And, and skiing's technical, it takes a bit. Anything to add on that, Gary? The next tutorial, uh, if you have the nice pole plant and the timing, and you have the hit, what to do with it? That, <laughs> that how you can improve that the pole plant will not be a, a push, a hit, a mm. too direct impulse. So just anticipate the impulse to get better in pole yeah. plant and longer. And this is actually learning the right pole plant without the pole. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's an interesting stuff. 
Good. Join me for the next part, which will be, we're heading into the last part of this one. And then after that, you'll be looking at Gary's tutorial and we'll be talking about that. And also don't worry guys, we do have videos and stuff of all the trainers as well skiing, which hey, we'll critique as well. We don't mind critiquing ourselves and talking about what we like, what we don't like about our turns and how we are seeing the season ahead and what we're gonna improve on, yeah? Yep. See you in the next one. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.